Hi everyone. Uh, today we're just going to look at a uh, technique uh, to restore old photos. Um, there's actually a few things we're going to use, including the toolbar and some tools, some filters and some adjustment layers. So all said and done, we should have a product uh, that starts like this and ends like this. Okay, so we're going to move you through it, um, show you some techniques and uh, leave you to uh, have that kind of outcome down the road. Okay, we're also going to show you, or I'm going to show you some uh, some colorization techniques too. So first of all, of all, best practices is unlock your layer by clicking on it once, and come down to your photo bin and uh, duplicate by right clicking and call it your second uh, duplicate after, which is this one, where we're going to do most of our work. So a few things to to note right away. One is um, the brown staining on an image like this, or the difference in color. Sometimes it's just damage. So to get rid of that, we would like to say um, enhance, adjust color, and we want to remove color. So removing the color from the whole thing kind of gives it a, a almost like a grayscale feel, which is fine for now because we can colorize it later. Um, that would be then um, one way we can do this, enhance color and remove color, okay? Secondly, um, dust scratches and noise on the image are often part of a damaged photo. So Another technique to do um, right off the bat here is to add a filter and we're going to go down to noise filter and we're going to say dust and scratches. So in this respect, move that panel over that dialog box. Um, you guys can, it'll suggest, it's suggesting two and 10 for me for radius and threshold, but you work with those sliders and generally try to bring it to a point where you're still, you're still a very clear picture. Okay. Without all that busyness in the background. So, that's a little too much of the radius, so I'm just going to lower it and, um, you know, just play around with it based on the threshold. So you have to kind of tweak the two. I have threshold 15. Um, my radius is 3. I kind of like where that's going. I think any more would be a little too much. I'm going to actually lower this too to kind of smooth out the background just a little bit. And then I have to adjust this, right? So... You, uh, I might even just type in two and see how that goes. That looks pretty good to me. So you don't want to ruin the integrity of the image. You just want to adjust it so that you get rid of, you know, little bits of, uh, you know, white spots and things like that, dust. It just evens it out a little bit more. Okay. Um, that would be another option then is the dust and scratches filter. I'm going to say okay to this. A third one might be to add um, a blur filter. And this is a uh, surface blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going to try the surface blur first. And this just gives you smoother edges, kind of. And we'll, I'll show you if you continue to increase radius and threshold, you get a little further. But some of those scratches in the background can disappear in this respect. Now, you don't want to, we want to worry about this because if you're going to colorize, you don't want their uniform and her dress to blend together. You want to keep that um, separate and distinct, at least that line. So. We've got to watch out for our threshold here. Uh, we're just trying to smooth a little bit out. You know, it's a subtle effect. It's not meant to be large. We definitely don't want a big blurry image. So keep that in mind. I'm going to say okay to that. All right. So three or four uh, ideas there. Um, next, what I would like you guys to try is grab your spot healing brush. And um, basically the way this works is everything outside the circle where I run my brush is um, basically um, is sort of grabbed or measured and put inside the circle. So if I was to, um, you know, move this over this way, what I'm doing is sort of grabbing what's outside my circle and putting it inside the circle. So in order to get rid of these things, this is one option to get rid of these blemishes in the background. Okay, as you can see, work fairly well. Right, I'm just sort of smoothing that out. So that's too much. You grab some of his uniform, as you can see and some of his face. So we're getting a little too close just to give you an idea of how that works. Okay. So the other one is the healing brush, which works a lot like clump stamp tool. I would alt and left click to select, and then I'd let go of alt and I would move my selection where I want it to go. And as you can see inside the circle, um, I have a image of where, I, what I'm pasting when I do this or what I'm clicking when I move it around. So, uh, that's called clone overlay. And I can see what's inside. If you don't like that effect, you can say, don't show overlay. And then what's inside is not visible. Okay. I like to use it because I get to see what I'm looking at, what I'm, what I'm putting in there. 
The other thing you can do is lower the opacity in here. So you're getting an effect that, you know, just is sort of semi-transparent. That's really effective in areas like hair and with things with um, with uh, pattern or contrast. So I'm going to kind of just give you an example. So you're just subtly putting it over, right? You're not um, you're not doing anything too extreme, and just moving it over these areas. So with his cheekbone here, it's shady down here. It's light up here. I want to pay attention to that when I'm spot healing along his cheek. Right, make my brush even smaller up here. Select that lighter area, move that over. And you get the idea. This is a close-up job right in here. This is a slow job. This is not something we're gonna do quickly. For example, I wanna grab this shaded part and move that down to his collar, roughly, and move this part of his, his you know, the lighting of his cheek down here to get rid of this stuff. That's gonna take some time. You know, work around the eyes and the nose. Again, you need to take your time. It's not a rush job, but nice, subtle changes, okay? The other one um, to think about is, that was healing brush and spa healing brush. The other one you could use is clone stamp. Again, you can adjust opacity here. And again, you can choose clone overlay and you can choose opacity. So I'm gonna put my opacity high and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna lower my brush. I'm just going to kind of move myself over slowly. You know, just to get, keep the integrity of the image going. And move above his head, just to give myself a little bit of that, you know. And I'm using a fuzzy end. I should probably use a sharp point, sharp uh, brush point. Um, in here, maybe not you know, in the middle, but when you get closer to the uniform and stuff, probably a sharp drop push point. So clicking in here. And if you remember back, we can uh, toggle between the two. Um, you had scratches in this whole area and you had scratches on his uniform. And once you've applied the filter dust and scratches, you know, surface or Gaussian blur, uh, things like that, you end up with a lot of that gone. I didn't edit this uniform, as you can see. That was all removed on the um, filters we applied. Now in the background, um, some of it was removed with the color change, meaning that we changed, we, we removed color. And then this part up here was obviously edited by me using these tools, showing you these tools. So once that's all said and done, um, you know, you want to worry about lighting. Um, her side of her face here is quite dark. Um, you know, I would suggest something like the, the dodge or the burn tool to kind of shade and lighten highlights. In this case, I think we want to use the dodge tool and, and focus on highlights where we would kind of lighten up that side of the face. Important because if the eye had too much damage, we can actually take one eye and turn it over and put it on the other side. Uh, I know it sounds strange, but it actually um, is a, one technique in terms of replacing damaged areas. Shade that a little darker, maybe, maybe a little too much there. And I'll just give you an example. Maybe this isn't the best image to do this on. But if we needed to kind of make that eye more distinct and this eye has a sharpness to it because this eye is more damaged, um, I would simply edit. I've selected it first, edit, copy, edit and paste and take that extra eye. Now I can't put it this way because it doesn't look realistic at all, but I could turn it and flip it with the handle and turn it this way and kind of get it into space there. And when I'm done that, I have a little bit of an eye to work with. And uh, I don't want it too far out, as obviously. But the idea there is um, you can edit around it. You can, you know, it's not meant to be um, not meant to be something that you would you would normally have to do. It's just an idea of something you could do. Um, you'd have to play with the lighting. But again, this is not the best image for such a technique. But you can think about cutting and pasting pieces um, to kind of replace severely damaged areas of the photo. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, it's probably useful. So, you know, the background up here that's quite damaged, maybe I'm grabbing this background, placing it over here in this corner by flipping it, and then I'm blending the edge together. So just some suggestions some things to think about doing. Uh, lastly here, uh, we would like to colorize this photo. So we want to make sure that when we're done, all the scratches and all the damage is repaired, that we're now going to colorize things like uniform, um, face, hair, etc. So I'm going to subtract my selection here and just bring it up. 
and I'm going to add and just get a little bit of this as an example for you. Now his collar should be the same color as his uniform, but it gets a little tricky up there to select it. So you could give it a shot such as this, and we need to uh, figure that out by slowly doing this. Um, you know, we're going to kind of select these parts of his uniform, not too worried about the cracks in between right now, although you can go that far. So I've subtracted the white parts. I'm going to subtract the buttons as I go. I'm going to subtract the button over here. And it looks like it might be a little high over here. This is off of his arm. So I'm just going to do that. And uh, now we're ready to colorize. So we will add an adjustment layer. You can take it from over here above your layers or you can grab it from the menu on the top. Adjustment layer, I'm going to do a hue and saturation layer. I'm going to say OK. And when I get this box, this won't work unless I click on Colorize. And when I click on Colorize, it allows me to. Otherwise, I'm sliding the sliders with no effect. So Colorize, you know, I want a military uniform here. You can see I selected his chin, so that would be something I don't want to do. And again, go back. Don't try to recolor his chin later. Go back fix the first selection so that we do it right as we go. And I've got a nice military uniform look there. Um, for flesh color, I do the same thing. I can decide what color I want to make her dress. I can change the background. And in the end, after that colorization procedure, and this is only when all the scratches and all the damage is repaired, um, I would end up with something like this. Okay. Uh, and as you can see, you know, coloring the hair is fine too. And one other note to make is if I went too intense on one of these colorization um, filters, uh, what I can do is actually change the opacity of that layer. So I'd come up here and I would reduce opacity just to give it, maybe I want to see through, get some of that contrast, those wrinkles. And lowering the opacity also adds a little bit of a realistic look. So there you go, some restoration techniques. Um, you know, take it or leave it, but, uh, you know, they're very useful in terms of restoring a damaged old photo. So have at her.